Hi y'all, welcome to Petite Viva Crafts episode 42. I'm recording here today on August 17th, 2017. Thank you so much for joining me today you guys. I know it's been quite a while since I've recorded. Um, I have gone through some ups and downs this summer and I took some personal time off and I apologize for not giving you guys a little bit more of a heads up. My grandfather had passed away this summer and I had to go back to visit my family as well as deal with some other things. Um, so I didn't want to bog you guys down with one, me not knitting very much and two, me not being my normal chipper self. I've taken the past few months to kind of find myself again, get my knitting mojo back, but I'm happy to be back chatting with you guys. I do have some finished objects, some stash, as well as some other works in progress that I had put down for a little while. So let's go ahead and get started. So first up is Dash. I traveled to Europe a few weeks ago and I did stop by Stephen and Penelope while I was in Amsterdam. And holy smokes, that store is gorgeous. They have quite a bit of indie dyed yarns. Um, of course, there's lots of hedgehog fibers as well as some undercover otter, which is the, uh, I guess, a local dyer to them, as well as some American brands like Brooklyn Tweed. I had originally only intended to purchase one skein of yarn that was like indie dyed, and then maybe one skein that was a sock yarn that was already balled up, um, since I had already almost finished the socks that I had brought along for the whole trip. But I saw this super cute bag in the window, and it really is like, the perfect bag for me so I ended up purchasing this bag um, it does have the Stephen Penelope tag on the front and the handmade in Amsterdam tag on the back in addition to that I did purchase some enamel pins this little sheep head as well as this little shield this is knit all the things um, even though it's orange I think it's still pretty cute to go with the, the neon yellow that is this bag I got a skein of Schopenwall self-striping, self-patterning sock yarn. And the indie dyed yarn that I ended up choosing was this Technicolor um, skein of Undercover Otter. There were a lot of skeins that spoke to me. And I had actually picked up a few that is very similar to what I already have. So I put those back and went with this skein and I actually found out that this was the last one of the batch since it had been so popular it had been flying off the shelves and the colorway that I got it's called Killer Clowns from Outer Space and it's kind of blowing out the the camera because it is neon bright and super cute and it also matches my bag which is another reason why I got it which is probably terrible but <sighs> putting them together made me happy so there it's that I only purchased two skeins of yarn over probably two and a half months, which is really good for me. But the reason why I didn't purchase that much yarn was because I actually had a dye day here with Nicole Mork from Mork Made Fiber Co. Um, and our other friend Twee from Twisted Stitches Podcast and our friend Jesse. Yeah, it was so much fun. We had a, like two tables set up in my backyard. We had three burners going and like, Nicole was like pretty much giving us the rundown of how to actually dye yarn and it was a blast So let me show you guys some of the stuff that I dyed first up is kind of a a little bit boring But I had wanted to over dye some of my knit picks Stroll tweed it was a beigey kind of color and it was on sale at one point So I purchased eight 50 gram skein. So it's 400 grams total and we over dyed it this lovely burgundy maroon color. I have a special place in my heart for this color because it's actually the color of my alma mater, uh, Texas A&M. So I figured it would be a really fun um, color to have for maybe some sort of fall garment. I haven't decided what I wanted to make out of it yet, but the yarn was on sale and we dyed it a much prettier color than it started out. We all went in for a bear yarn order through a uh, wool to dye for as well and the two bases that I ended up dyeing that day was some merino cashmere nylon in DK weight and then some in sock weight. So for the DK weight I purchased six skeins worth. I figured that was a safe amount of DK for a good size sweater for me. I didn't really have a pattern in mind or anything. I just chose a approximate sweaters quantity of yarn. 
this was our result uh, for that one. This one I kind of had more of a galaxy theme that I had wanted. Um, lots of purples, blues, pinks in there with some speckles of black and teal and such as well. Dyeing this was intense. Since there was six skeins, I had to use two trays with three skeins apiece. Nicole has the best sense of color I've ever seen. This is mostly her doing. I don't think I would have been as liberal with uh, the various colors as she was. Yeah, so I adore the way these turned out. I think it's gonna be a really pretty sweater to have. Like I said, I don't have a pattern for it yet, but I think the, the final yardage was around 1,300 yards of DK weight yarn. Next up, I dyed a skein to go with my skein of woolen vine. Um, if you guys remember, this was a skein that I picked up at Stitches West. In addition to this skein of yarn, I also picked up these purple centered beads that have a blue glass outside. I couldn't find a one skein shawl pattern that I really liked that much, so I had decided to go ahead and dye a skein that coordinated with this so that I could either use striping or color blocking, just another skein to kind of um, extend the yardage a little bit for this. So here is the skein that I ended up dyeing. It's very similar to my DK, except uh, this one has less bright teal blue and almost no pink. This is mostly a purple and like kind of a indigo blue skein. Um, and I was drawing from, there's little speckles of purple here and um, some of the blue, there's some black in here as well. So that's kind of why I picked um, the darker indigo. I think the two skeins go together pretty well. They have quite a bit of contrast so that I'll be able to use them in a striping pattern if I'd wanted to, but still being very coordinated with each other. I think it still looks pretty good with the beads as well. Um, I would probably keep the beads on the light color and not put them on the dark color, but we shall see once I actually find a pattern I like for this. Alrighty, last but not least is a skein for you guys. I felt bad for being gone for so long, um, so I dyed up a extra skein that I wanted to give away. This base is the Knit Picks Hawthorne base. And yeah, I just really like the way it turned out. I hope you guys do too. If you guys would like to enter to win this skein that I have dyed, please comment down below of your favorite summer treat. This one reminded me of peach sorbet and the little blue and red speckles like splashed on there actually kind of reminds me of fourth of july fireworks so this skein is very summer to me uh so yeah let me know what your favorite treats are for the summer now that it's all wrapping up as y'all can tell i had a very productive dye day it was like a long day of dyeing but everyone had quite a bit of fun we got a lot of skeins dyed and it also kind of took the edge off of my craving to purchase new yarn next up is some finished objects um, it's been a little while since I've talked to you guys, so I have a few finished objects to show you guys. Last time I showed you guys these socks, I think I just had the toe of one left over, so I finished that pair. This is the mustache in the colorway Shiny Happy People, which was released at the DFW Fiber Fest this year. So that's one pair of socks. Next up, I also made a pair of shorty socks from my leftover yarn. This pattern it's just kind of one that I made up myself. It's, there's just about eight rows of ribbing, heel flap, double gusset. Oh, sorry, these socks are a little bit dirty. And then I just knit the foot and a typical wedge toe. The next pair of socks that I finished, I actually started and finished these on my trip to Europe. I actually went from LA to Milan, uh, Milan down to the coast in Cinque Terre, and then from there back to Milan, flew to Amsterdam. From Amsterdam, we took a train to Tomorrowland and then, then came back to the US. So I had a lot of flight and train time. So I actually finished this pair of socks. This is another mustache yarns colorway. This one is Calaveras, and I actually purchased this colorway at Citrus West as well. I ended up splitting this skein uh, with Twee from Twisted Stitches, so I have two socks that are not 
exactly matching. It's the same colorway, I just didn't have enough yarn to have two completely matching socks. Since this colorway is pretty eclectic anyway, I don't mind them not being completely matching. For this sock, I actually did just my normal vanilla sock with a heel flap, double gusset, and normal toe instead of my normal smooth operator sock pattern that I use for self-striping yarns. I didn't mind the way the stripes altered just a little bit for the heel and toe. I like the way this heel actually fits my foot better than a afterthought heel. Plus, I didn't have to worry about as many ends when I knit it this way. So yeah, those were all my finished socks since I've talked to you guys last. What actually gave me back my knitting mojo is that um, for my Europe trip, I knew I was going to Amsterdam and I had wanted to visit the Stephen Penelope shop. And with all the traveling, um, I wanted something warm to take along with me that is multifunctional. So why not a giant uh, kimono style Stephen West pattern? The pattern I ended up selecting was Marled Madness um, by Stephen West. It is a kimono style top and the way he has the pattern written, um, you can actually wear it as more of, kind of a cropped jacket versus if you flip it around you can wear it as a much longer in the front um, style coat. And um, it's kind of hard to photograph this uh, sweater top because it kind of is just a giant blanket that has armholes that I can put my hands into. But otherwise, it just, yeah, looks like a giant shawl. I loved having this on the plane. I could wrap myself up in it. I sleep on the plane pretty much like I used to do when I was in school. I tuck my head into my arms and kind of just plop down and the the wings of this uh, sweater were like perfect to wrap my face in so I don't get that huge amount of draft that is the plane all the time. Um, yeah, it was super warm. It was perfect for Amsterdam in Belgium because it, it got pretty chilly at night. Um, but let me show you all the different parts. It For this pattern, I use Hugh Loco's um, Phyllis sock in the colorway Toadstool held throughout the entire sweater. In addition to those colors, I switched out the yarn that I held along with it. The reason I did that was so that it would have a more cohesive look instead of having like incredibly stark color sections along the way. Along the shawl collar here, I used some Hoigu Painter's Palette um, Premium um, in a yellow color that I picked up from Wild Fiber. This bright yellow here is Forbidden Woolery's Goldilocks that I used for my Threshold sweater. Um, down here I had this peachy colored singles yarn from Malabrigo that I purchased I think in 2013. It's some of my oldest stash. I hadn't used it for anything else and it was a lace weight but held double it didn't make too much of a difference. And down below here this reddish color is to keep Olive Yarns Tequila Sun that I purchased while I was in Texas. I had a few pops of color, this uh, lovely teal aqua color and this dark red as well as this golden yellow color. Those three were mini skeins from my Material Culture Fiber Arts Hummingbird colorway uh, which was a mystery colorway plus bag um, that I got back in, in April maybe? I think in April. But yeah, oh, and another stash buster color. This kind of autumn-y yellow mustard variegated color is um, some D stash from my friend Jesse. It was um, fresh from the cauldron in the colorway. It comes in pints, I guess like beer or mead. Overall, it is huge. I ended up removing some of the uh, rows at the shoulder but it's still pretty giant on me. It it dwarfs my petite frame. I love how comfy it is and the way it looks. I definitely am going to be bringing it with me as I travel. I removed about four inches worth of garter rows, but um, since it is garter, it still stretches out quite a bit. But yeah, I love it. It has a lovely eye cord edge on it. So that's it for finished objects. Now on to works in progress. So I picked up my crochet blanket again, actually. 
I only added probably about three or four more rows on this blanket. Nothing crazy. This is just a granny square from the center out um, scrappy yarn blanket. As I mentioned, I finished my Calaveras socks during my Europe trip. So I started these socks on my way home. And here it is. It's bold stripe. I'm just using my normal basic vanilla sock. I traveled with my carbon needles. Um, I wasn't sure of European travel restrictions, um, so I picked the carbon needles thinking that it would be less offensive than metal needles, but I had no trouble um, getting through any of the TSA equivalent places um, during my travels. So last up for my works in progress is I actually picked up my stasis pullover from way back. I don't think I've touched it in a few months now, but when I focus, I actually get quite a bit done. Uh, last time I left you guys, I probably was like halfway through a sleeve. So now I finished both sleeves here and started the body. I'm already past the color work at the bottom. So here's a little bit uh, more of a close up of the color work the inside. So this is the stasis pullover and it was published in Brooklyn Tweed and the colors that I'm using is Wonderland Yarns and a Cheshire Cat Base I believe it is and the colorway is called Goat's Beard which is just a tonal gray and for the color work the blue tealish color that I'm using here is uh, with pointed stick the base is called Glitter Pen and the colorway is Mermaid. Since the yarn is variegated, it's causing the colorway to look a little bit more variegated and I think it's very interesting looking. This is a bottom-up sweater which I've never knit before. It's a little bit interesting because I can't really try on the body to see where it's supposed to hit my body shape. So I did, I used the measurements from the pattern and I think it'll be okay because there's only a little bit of shaping on this sweater so I I think it'll be fine but I'm more used to trying on a top-down sweater so I can see exactly if I need to add more waist decreases or hip increases and such. It's a little bit harder with a bottom-up sweater but yeah I love the way this color work looks. I'm super happy that I had decided to use a variegated skein. I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm probably a third of the way done with the body now. Um, and then once I get up to the underarms, I'll be able to bring it all together and do some more color work and then zoom, zoom to the top. And this is going to be a great sweater to have once it gets cooler here. Um, the Cheshire Cat Base, it's pretty, it's a light fingering. So I don't think the sweater will be too warm. Perfect for LA because it doesn't get super cold if I'm honest. I don't think I can wear a true Icelandic loafy sweater here. I think I would die. So <laughs> this nice lightweight color work sweater should be great once I get it done. So yeah, that's it for all of my knitting. I still have been going to pottery. I did take a little bit of a break, but I picked up some stuff uh, when I went back to it recently. And here is another super cute yarn bowl that I made. It's pretty small. The funny thing about the pottery is that uh, sometimes, at least for me, I'm not like super anal retentive about it. So sometimes the things that come out are just what they're going to be. And this one ended up smaller than I was expecting, but it can still fit. This is a stain of yarn um, and it does fit. It's a little snug, but it still twists around pretty easily and I'm sure once I start knitting the ball, it will roll around completely fine. Um, this one is another mixed clay pot with a nice white glaze on top. And then in addition to that, I also ended up making some mugs, which once again, judging size before it gets uh, fired is a little bit difficult. These were definitely bigger when they started out. 
but yeah, just two little mugs, uh, super cute. But yeah, thank you guys um, for coming back and still watching and subscribing to my channel. It really does mean a lot to me that you guys are watching and I hope you guys can uh, understand the break that I took. Um, life kind of throws you some pretty big whoppers sometimes and uh, I think everyone needs to focus on themselves uh, when it's necessary. Um, sometimes we get so wrapped up in like what we should be doing or what obligations we have assigned ourselves to that we kind of forget that. And um, I have an incredible supportive uh, friend group here that kind of made me reevaluate what I needed at the time. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be knitting again. And I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this pretty long episode for me and I will talk to you guys soon. Please make sure to comment down below of your favorite summer dessert if you guys would like to win this skein um, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!